Welcome to Dodgers Dogs. As part of the Dodgers Daily Network, Casey Porter here joined by Coach Holt on a glorious Thursday morning as the Dodgers bounced back. Coach, you say it all the time. It's the major leagues. These guys have million-dollar ball players. They can beat you on any given night, especially a couple nights ago when Bobby Miller goes out and doesn't pitch very well. Michael Grove doesn't pitch very well, but it's the major leagues. We we tend to forget that sometimes, Case. We being fans, I'm talking about. Yes. But we, we should know better. It's the same way in the You NFL. and I included, yes. Yes, uh, <laughs> us included. Uh, it's the same way in the NFL. There's, there's, there's a fine line between the winning teams and losing teams. They've all got great players. You know, sometimes it's just a quarterback in, in football a lot of times. And it could be the head coach. A guy called the play sometimes has a lot to do with it. But all teams yeah. have athletes, uh, million-dollar football players. Same way here in the big leagues. Million-dollar players. Uh, you know, that's why you see so many teams have terrible years and they come back and they're right in the thick of it, maybe being right. a World Series. Cause they're, no, they're not that far away, any of the big league teams. It's usually a, you know, a pitching staff, you know, a, a little depth. There's not a whole lot of difference. The Dodgers, you look, are loaded. The other teams that aren't, there's still not a whole lot of difference because you have uh, uh, multi-million dollar players. And, and managers are getting paid a lot of money to, to do stuff. And organizations with, you know, endless amounts of money to do what they have to do to try to win, which they all do. There's, there's Money's not an issue used in the big leagues. Some smaller markets may be a deal, but they're bringing enough money that, that whatever it takes yeah. to win. And and uh, anytime you go out there, you got a chance of losing. Anytime yeah. you go out there, you got a chance of winning. Absolutely. We used to tell our high school guys the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And it might be embarrassing for that day from the grand scope of baseball. I mean, yeah. it just happens. I mean, the best teams lose to the worst teams. So more consistently, I would say, in baseball than any other sport. But I know you're saying right now, hey, Bobby Miller, Bobby Miller, Bobby Miller, because that's why the Dodgers lost the other night. And neither one of us are going to disagree with that, I wouldn't think. I haven't talked to Coach about right. that. But we're going to wait for that to, to talk about Bobby Miller later because we have a game last night that was a lot funner to talk about that we're going to chew into right now. But the Dodgers won 8-4. to four. The Padres also beat the Astros. The Padres have just been yep. playing so good. So still – Three and a half games ahead of the Padres. It's been really interesting, Coach. Philadelphia and the Brewers have been playing each other. It's kind of one of those jockeying situations because, yeah, you don't want to go to Philadelphia with Philadelphia having the home field playoff advantage in th until you get to the World Series. So you'd like to finish first in the National League, but then if you do finish first, then you have to face either the Padres or the Diamondbacks in the second round of the playoffs. So – it's one of those darn if you do, darn if you don't. So I know Joe and Oral were talking last night on the broadcast that it's probably better for the Dodgers to finish second, which is weird. That that is hard to see, hard to even comprehend thinking that way. But we've we've seen how it works both ways. Case we've seen it where you have the time off, you come out and you get smoked. You know, not just the Dodgers but other teams. So uh, the, the matchups let. let it's going to be whoever comes out of the National League, yeah, and for the American League too. This is nothing new, but especially this year, whoever comes out of the National League's uh, certainly going to be battle tested, and they're certainly going to be deserving because there's there's not an easy mark as well. It shouldn't be. It's it's a stinking playoffs. So it's not going to be an easy mark anyway. But you can't look up and go, well, you know, we got that's a good first round. There's no first good first round picks. There kind of is, but they're kind of in because they're usually they're all good. Playing, they're all good. And they're playing well at the end of the year usually. Uh, as we know, the teams that are playing well the best. And look at who's in the World Series last year. The Rangers won it. Them and the Diamondbacks. Nobody would have picked those two to be in the World Series last year. But they were playing better than everybody at the end of the year. So, you just don't have a crystal ball to see how it's going to go there. You know, I, I just soon finish first. I hate I hate to ever think in, in my mind, hey, well, we need that's to finish right. second. But I get where those guys are coming from, though. I do, and, and that's why I say it's weird. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't – I'm not saying they're wrong. I mean, everything they were saying – makes an exact amount of sense but just in my brain to tell my players hey let's finish second <laughs> that that i don't know that i can get myself to do that <laughs> and oral hershizer was called bulldog for a reason he, yes, he, right. he's not oh, yeah. it's not his makeup <laughs> he, he's bulldog for a reason he can pitch you to a world series championship almost by himself in 1988 uh, that tells you I need to know about his makeup. But, yeah, for him to say that, of course, those guys study it every day more than, yeah, I, do. More than I do. So they, they may yeah. be on to something. I have told my defense while I was coordinating defense to let the offense score mm -hmm. in a game that we were losing because it, like, mathematically it was the only way we could actually come back and yeah. tie it. But I think I threw up in my mouth a little bit when yeah, I did, it's hard. When I did oh, that. Oh, I know. It's harder, <laughs> it's harder to do than you think. But, hey, yeah. 
Boy, what a great night last night for Landon Knack. I have said a couple of different times, Coach, there's better versions of Landon Knack out there that I have seen. And he just – I know he's had the one bad game. But he just keeps showing these better versions of Landon Knack. I get the same feeling as we had last year, Case. We talk, we're talking about different people now. But the yes. similar circumstances where these young kids are going to have to step up. You know, and, and, and Landon has done it. You know, like you said, he's only had really only had one bad outing. And the way he pitched last night, there's always a surprise. You, sometimes yeah. good, sometimes bad. There's always a surprise <laughs> in the playoffs. And you're sitting there going, I'm, I'm hoping it's somewhere to the line. Everybody's going, who the hell is this landing that guy? Where did he come from? You know, I hope it's in that respect. And there's going to be those those type of things happening in the playoffs. Why not land in that and why not the Dodgers? But it's it's great to see him perform like that. And like I said, Case, you followed his career through the minor leagues and every, every, everything better than I have. So uh, I know I know you're proud of him, happy for him. But you know, the Dodgers aren't into the, the feel good stories. He's there because he earned his shot and he deserves it. That's a great point, Coach, and he's he's earned it more than anybody else that could be there. Right at this moment, I think Ben Casperius has probably earned a little bit more runway as well. But here is the impressive thing about Landon Knack. I've always said many different times, "Hey, what makes him so good is he executes. He pitches backwards. He keeps." <laughs> Hitters off balance. He, in other words, he pitches. Yeah. But how about last night, Coach? He went five scoreless innings, only had to throw seven change-ups. He threw his fastball like 52% of the time, and it was in the zone almost 70% of the time. So last night was just, hey, boys, here's my fastball. It's going to be in the zone. I don't think you're going to be able to damage me with it. That To me, that was a different kind of landing knack that – that just showed way more confidence, I think, from that perspective than I've, I've even seen out of him. Well, big league pitcher, we always just sat back. We've all done that. I used to sit back. Why in the hell are they throwing Barry Bonds a fastball? The reason they aren't because those guys throw strikes. They're not yeah. going to be in the big leagues if they can't throw strikes. So yeah. you can pitch around Barry, which they did. He took a lot of walks. I'm just, I use that as an example because sometimes you're like, what the hell? It's Barry Bonds. What are you doing? Yeah. You know? But the reality of it is you have to throw strikes and you have to throw your fastball. You know, it, you do. It, it's something you have to spot it up. It can't be. Yeah, Bobby have, Miller. Yes, exactly. Bob, nobody can, you know, Bobby throws as hard as anybody in the big leagues. But any, but you have to throw your fastball. In that case, he's got to spot his up, too. You know, these hitters can hit everything. You know, the, the, the 100 coming in, 120 going out, whatever the heck you want to call it. They can all do it. But that's that's a great performance by him. It, it, it's And we've seen Casey on the high school level. Some some kids just have the it, you know. What I mean, they you know, do. We, we know that you're sitting there, you're watching me the bullpen and preseason. Oh, this kid don't look very good. Hell, you put him in game, nobody can hit him. Yeah, you know, right. We, I've had that. You've had that. Oh yeah. You're just like, how the hell's he getting people out? Yeah, but he does. Absolutely. And some kids just have the. That's it. probably Dodgers fans with Landon Knack. Yes. Some kids. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What the hell? Who's this guy? But yeah. <laughs> some kids just have that that it factor in every sport. That's the beautiful part about sports, uh, kids. We all seen the practice. We just call them four, you know, the four o'clock All Americans look great in the batting cage, can't hit crap in the game. You, know, you got vice versa. You know, you uh, you have guys that are terrible practice players that are gamers. You know, we, we've all seen the same thing. Frustrating. Frustrating <laughs> as heck, but you know, got to put yeah. him in there. He drives me nuts. Yeah, well, yeah. Practice. The guy will go three for four, just getting off the bus. You know, that type of guy. But, you know, so they have to perform. He threw the fastball. They, they just have, you know, there's, there's no secret to it. You know, he gets an opportunity and he can do it. And some guys just, ha- just have it. You hope. I know we the sample size is small on him, but you hope he's the guy. We, man, he's just got it. You know, he, he's a it guy. You know, this. I, I don't know how the hell he gets people out, but he does. You know, yeah. he, maybe he's that guy. And everybody, everybody's yeah. seen those guys. Absolutely. I tell you, his fastball rode the top of the zone last night. It was like 95, Coach. It just mm-hmm. goes to show you don't have to throw it 100 miles an yeah. hour. Yep. To, to get past Major League bats, even with your fastball. That thing was riding the top of the yep. zone. You know, that ride, what that means is it gives that rising effect. Yep. So, to a hitter, you know, it looks like it's going to be right here at a really hittable spot, and then it just kind of just – it doesn't keep rising, but it has that rising effect to it. And then low in the zone, he was kind of getting a little bit run, a little bit of run to his arm side. So, that fastball was just simply a fantastic pitch and yep. – I'll tell you a couple things about him. It just felt like he was pitching to length versus trying to just do everything he could just to keep it zero off the board, which sometimes means you throw like 70 pitches in one inning, right? Yeah. So it just kind of felt like it was a very mature outing because it was the Landon Knack that I know in the sense that he took the mound, 
with a statement, the way, the way that he was pitching to his team, I'm going to knock out a whole bunch of innings, and I don't think he was real happy that he didn't get to get through six. Yeah, that's the guy you want. That, that's Absolutely. exactly the guy you want. When you walk out of the manager, I want a guy who's pissed off because I'm taking him out. And we all, we all know that. And most of them are. You know, if you got a guy ready to come out, you know, whatever whatever you can go, know, there's different circumstances there. But, yeah, and also he knows what's going on in the organization. Yes. He, he, he knows what's going on in the big leagues. That so could be his big value is that he – because that's always been his value is that he, he was the only guy that went at least seven innings last year yep. at AAA Oklahoma City. That could be his value is his length, right? Absolutely. And he knows what's yes. going on up there, and he knows what the Dodgers need. So Great point, there's Coach. some pressure on him. Not, but well, it's enough pressure. The Dodgers are still in the pit race. They haven't sold anything up yet, and he's called on. And but he also knows some injuries. You know, some people aren't. We know. We know we've lost guys for the year. You know, guys that we were kind of counting on being there aren't going to be there now. Gavin, who's so. going to be the goal? God, he, he looks up and he's like, you know, in his mind, which is great. Maybe he's thinking, hell, I'm the guy. Mm-hmm. Look at me. You know, I'm going to go show you what, and, and I'll give you seven or eight innings. And he probably could have, but, you know, they're, they're pre- the Dodgers are probably planning ahead to, yeah, five. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yes. We, you know, if they probably could have let him go seven, but they're also thinking down the line, too, well, you know, maybe he is that other guy. So we, yeah. we're, we're going to be smart with him. So it was a great, it was, it was a great night and a lot of respects for the Dodgers that. A guy who, you know, has been on your radar a long time and the Dodgers' radar. Not, I know sure. you follow it more, but. Uh, that he gets the opportunity again and uh, performs like that. Again, don't tell oh, Marlins, last place team. I saw some of that on social media. I get it. Fans get upset. Last place. Like we said at the start of the showcase, they got multi-million they players. Do. They do. They, they just do. Look at the Oakland yeah. A's. They got a guy like one dude got 40-something they homers from the A's. You. Yeah. I mean, Olsen used to play for the A's. Nobody knew who the hell he yeah. was. He's with the Braves. Oh, this is this guy. I mean, they're all over the place. And, mm-hmm. and the Marlins have them too. I used to have a, a pitch for a kid. He's like he's like a second son to me. Josh Rains. He's went to NOC Enid. Now he's at Weatherford at Southwestern. Just a wonderful young man. We were we were so close. And when I first got him, he wanted to strike everybody out, you know. And then it'd be the third inning, and you had to take him out because it was like he had thrown hundred pitches already. And I explained to him. I said, Josh, you are so substantially better than everybody else I have. We all know that. At the high school level, you get yep. that. You get that one dude, and they're just so much better than everybody you have, right? And so I said, Josh, let me explain something to you. You get 120 pitches in a high school game. So are the Guthrie Blue Jays better off with you giving up three runs in seven innings or you giving up no runs in three innings and me having to cover four extra innings? So if you give up, the, the say, three runs in seven – do you think we're only going to give up three runs in that next four innings that you're not pitching? I mean, how do you think that's going to work? And he goes, huh, that makes sense. So all of a sudden he took a couple miles an hour off yeah. his fastball. He added a little cutter, and we were going 120 pitches, and he was beating all the best teams. And so that reminds me of the approach from Landon Knack. Hey, and he did – and I'll, t- I'll say this, too. It's kind of interesting. I-, I compared it to this. It's like you tell a hitter, hey, man, just – Cut your swing down and just be yep. contact oriented. Yep. Just put the ball in play. And then I'll be damned if they don't hit a home run. Yeah. Because they hit a line drive somewhere, right? Yep. That's what Landon Knack reminded me of last night. He was just trying to hit the strike zone. He was just trying to go his five or six innings, do his job for the team, and I'll be damned if he doesn't come up with a shutout. What's this? It goes back to the same thing I just mentioned. Me being the guy, why the hell are we throwing Barry Bonds a fastball? Yeah. Because you have to. You have to yeah. throw strikes. Landon has to throw strikes or he won't be here. He knows that. Yes. Now, right. there's, there's good and bad strikes. We all know that. And some strikes are leaving the ballpark. So he, But he's got that pressure on him. But he, he's he got to throw strikes. And, and, and like I said, or you're not going to be there. He comes out and he's all over the zone. He, he's out. You know, he, he'll, he'll be shipped out somewhere or he'll be – you'll never see him again. Even that's if he's not, just not, not commanding. And, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but – you know that that you have to throw the fastball, and, and he he's showing he, he has that ability to do it. And again, I'm hoping he's a, the, the it guy. He's no got doubt. It. Yep. One of the bugaboos for him is that he had been giving up home runs on his fastball. So to throw his fastball at the highest at, at the rate that he did last night at such a high rate and give up no home runs, that's another positive sign for him. And then also the first bat of the game was like ten pitches, and then the dude hits a changeup into right field. Yeah, didn't phase him a bit. So, I mean, I think he showed a lot of composure, yep. a lot of maturity, and then also a lot of a talent and ability to execute. But, Coach, how about the offense for the Dodgers? 11 hits, three home runs, three for nine with runners in scoring position, four different guys at an RBI, fourth consecutive game 
with at least eight, tied for the most amount of home runs this month in all of baseball. The Dodgers have scored the second most runs of any team, only behind Arizona in September in Major League Baseball. The offense is rolling. It's great to see Muncy. Muncy's coming around. Yes, we, we know what he's a run producer. Always has been. You know, when he came back, he was you know whatever. Start. You should. He's going to start out slow. He's he hadn't seen that type of pitching live in a while. You know, but he's come. I mean, he he's getting he's get coming around to what we'll expect from Max Muncy. Again, I'll go crazy about Edmund Tom Edmund. What a great pickup. That Certified dude, ball player. Oh my God! And and, you, and now you can we can all see why the Dodgers have wanted yeah. him for a long time. That everybody they knew, and they're probably they're not. I'm assuming they're not the only team that wanted him. Everybody knows. I mean, he, he's a ball player, and he got that burr haircut. He's shaped, oh, yeah. got a burr haircut. Let's play baseball. Love that dude, and and he's producing. And he and you can tell he, he he's a great pickup for the team. So there we go again. Here's the lineup we talked about in preseason. Case all this, all the all, all the all the, all the stars up the top. The three MVPs. Blah blah blah. Okay, now Muncy's getting back. Edmonds producing. Oh yeah. Gavin Lux has been has been nails all the second half. You know he's up around two fifty when he's below two hundred before he's been nails the whole second half. So he's been our best hitter in a lot of respects. You know Will had a little s- slow area there, but but he's he got enough days off. He's starting to come back around too offensively. He's looking better offensively. So w- that's what you want. We hope we're, we're all sitting here hoping. Praying, whatever you want to do, crossing our fingers that that the, the Dodgers are hitting that peak just at the right time. I like I like the fact they're having to play. They're, yes, they're, they, they don't have it sewed up yet. They got to play. The Padres are are around your heels, man, and they're good. I, I said I'm not crazy about the Padres, but give them the credit. They, they can, those dudes can play, and they're they right can. there, and they're not out of it yet. And you still got no. three games with them. So I, I like the fact the Dodgers are, are challenged every day they come to ballpark. Even when you're playing the Marlins. Who you know? Oh, oh the last place team. Yeah, they're getting, yeah, the team that's got major league players too. Yes, even when you're playing them, they're challenged every day, and and I think it's play got, well. I think it's going to pay off in the long run. I think once the playoffs start, even if they do get that time off, I guess they're still doing that, aren't they? Even if they do get the yeah. time off, I yeah. still think they're going to have some momentum yeah. going into where I don't think we're in cruise mode last year, but we could have been. What was it 14 and a half games yeah. they won by right. last year? There, there, there was some cruising going on, whether you wanted to admit to it or not. But there's no cruising now. You, you better keep hooked up or you're going to lose a division. And I, I'll even get a little bit more specific than that. I like the fact that Dodgers are having to play, but they have had kind of this little arm's length lead mm-hmm. to where they haven't had to play like we saw the other day with the Braves yeah. desperately and had to overuse people. Yeah. And, you know, like a couple of years ago, they had that they had that crazy race and they had that crazy series with the Giants. And you could just feel just the exhaustion of it. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like that to where you're going to end up exhausted no. because you've had to play desperately and kind of at a, at a frantic pace. It's been, yes, hey, we've got some pressure on us, but it's kind of been measured. So I yeah. think it's been perfect. No, it's been great. And there is no desperation, as you mentioned, like the Braves said. There's no desperation because they're in the play. The Dodgers are going to be in the playoffs. Yes, right. You know, may, even if they don't win the division. And nobody wants to play them, you know. I mean, they're still the Dodgers, even if they don't win the division. So I can see where Oral and Joe are coming from. You know, yes, you want to, uh, we want to win, but whatever. I mean, that's where, as you said, there, there's some playing because you're in a pennant race. But there's also that no matter what happens, we're still going to be in the playoffs, and, and we can do whatever we want. Our goals are still in mm-hmm. front of us if we go in as a wild card. So, you know, whatever. You know, I mean, that, as you said, there's no, oh, if we don't win the division, we're out of the playoffs. There's, there's not that desperation going on. Yeah. Uh, I know, Coach, you got a kick out of this. I got a kick out of this. Every single Little League coach, high school coach, that was listening and watching last night when Tommy Edmond was hitting and Joe go, or, uh, Joe, uh, Oral goes, you know, because Tommy Edmond's a coach's son, and, and Oral goes, Hey, coach's son's playing pretty good. He's going to get to keep playing. And Joe goes, yep. And there's not a damn thing any of the other parents can say about it. I was like, oh, yeah, baby. I even posted about it. That was so great, man. It's like the Domingo Ayala. Little, those yeah, little short yeah, it, is, it is. The coach's it is. kid hitting three-hole playing shortstop. He only got seven <laughs> errors. <laughs> that guy cracks me up. I love Domingo. Not Tommy Edmund. Yeah, the Tommy yeah. Edmund is a coach's kid, and he's a – He's earned it, man. He, you can tell he's soaked up baseball knowledge. His dad's probably a hell of a coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know I'm big on the process, Coach. Hey, results are what they are. If you if you, if you obsess about results in baseball, you're going to be miserable. 
because there's so much failure, yep. uh, both with a team perspective. I mean, like we said, the best teams in baseball lose quite a bit, especially when you compare it to other sports, right? But, and so I, as a coach, you just teach your kids – Process, process, process. So they don't obsess about the results and they're miserable all the time, right? So kind of Will Smith's home run, yes, the results were great, but the process of it, it was the pitch he hit and how he got the barrel to it just showed me that he's fresh, that he, he's not worn down, he's not tired. The Dodgers have actually kind of peaked him to be ready right now because the way he controlled the barrel, the way he got the barrel to the baseball in the inner half, but then he was able to control the barrel – by keeping it fair, that showed me a lot about where Will Smith is at in terms of mentally and physically right now. Well, again, I'll go back. I mean, I, I don't know if you know, people get tired of hearing me saying it. Probably not, but look at the job the staff's done with him. Yes. He, he, they, they can see him wearing – how about Austin Barnes? God dang, I yes, hate the fact absolutely. he's hurt. hate the fact and Hunter, he's hurt. Fetty. And now Hunter's back in. They have had the luxury of, of giving him some rest, yep. keeping him fresh, and now you're starting to see a, a fresher Will Smith now because, you know, Austin Barnes would give great innings. Now, I hate that the kid's hurt. I hope he get him back. I don't know. I know he's got a well, – well, maybe Will, but Hunter Fiducia is coming in there. The Dodgers are so lucky that they've had been able to – they've done a masterful job of Will. I, I, I don't yeah. care anything else, and who knows, they may be fired after this season if things don't go. I don't know. I'm just saying – from a from a coaching manager standpoint, our brain case. I know we're high school coaches, but baseball's baseball. He's done a great job of seeing where he needed. Yeah, yes, he, he's getting wore down. It's catchers. He's they're, they're catchers. They're going to. They've done a great job of working with him, and now you can see he's coming around. You know, of course, you Absolutely. know Muncy's slowly coming around, but his is off of injury too. He was a you know injury for a long time. He's starting to come on. So a lot of pieces falling together right there. But Will is uh, Will looks. Where, where we need him to be and you know in another week or so is going to be peak performance out of him so that's a great sign for the Dodgers we know we got the three MVPs up top but we're not going to win with those three MVPs we're going to have to have you know people all up down the lineup you know c- contributing yeah I, I if I've heard coach Holt say once I've heard him say a million times put the damn ball in play man I mean I'm not asking you to get a hit I'm not asking you to hit the ball over the fence I'm asking you to put the damn ball in play. That's all I'm asking you to do, right? So, right. whenever Joe mentioned on the broadcast last night, Joe Davis just does a incredible. I flip back and forth between him and Oral, and then and then also Tim Neverett and Rick Monday, and it's just like nirvana for me. I mean, yep. I grew up listening to Vin Scully, which he's the greatest. Nobody will ever even come close to comparing to to Vin Scully. But if you could get close, the Dodgers have it with the with the team that they have right now. But I really thought it was cool that he mentioned that the teams that put the ball in play have been the ones that have been doing all the winning in the playoffs. Yes, the power does matter, but putting the ball in play has mattered as much or more. I, I thought that was a good comment that he made. No, that's very true. We saw with the Rangers last year. And even yes. The, the Diamondbacks up to that point. Again, I'm, I'm an Astros hater probably, but but a few years I ago, am, I, yeah. was, <laughs> I was very impressed a few years ago how they moved runners around, how two yes. all of them. That if they remove runners, I, I forget what inning. I can't remember who they're playing. They scored three runs. It might have been the Dodgers. Hell, they might have, maybe that's why I remembered. I think they scored three runs, had one hit. You know, they were moving runners around. And this was at the meat of their order. You know, Altuve you know, usually swings for the fence. They keep poking one to right field or something. Yeah. They were doing whatever. So that was you – know, and they ended up winning it all. Because, you know, so you're, you're absolutely correct. Putting the ball in play, moving runners. I know, you know, majorly they don't have the Casey Porter tone. Hey, we probably rolled approach. our eyes at yeah. you. <laughs> get wide, get up on the plate, short of you know. They don't have the two strike approach that we've used in American Legion High School, but uh, some some do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I bet Tommy Edmond does because he probably heard yeah. that from his dad. He probably grew yeah, up absolutely. that way. I bet he's got a two strike approach. But anyway, uh, you know, that's that's the sort of thing that you know you look for all that stuff. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's a good time. It's it's great great to, to see. But I, I agree with you. Uh, put the ball in play. Move runners. Move runners. Absolutely. It was good to see Michael Peterson last night in Major League Now. I know the Dodgers. You can hear my Dodgers dogs are ready for their walks. So we're about They're to ready. get off of here. But Michael Peterson. It was good to see him get on a Major League mound last night for the for the Marlins. Hey, and let's get to Bobby Miller, Coach Bobby Miller. I, I handed to it. I pretty much said it on my tweet afterwards. You know, whenever you're all in like this, the decisions are no longer process-based, so you can no longer say, we think Bobby Miller is going to be great, so we need to keep throwing him on a major league. That, that's all over. Uh, he ha- 
We love Bobby Miller. We think he's going to be a great pitcher someday. He's got to learn how to do what Landon Knack did last night. Find his fastball, not his sinker, his four-seam fastball, where he can locate to the top of the zone, the bottom of the zone, both sides of the plate, where he can play everything off of that. And trick quick trying to have 17 different pitches. Throw the fastball. Let the changeup play off of that. Throw a get-me-over curveball every now and then. Just go watch Yoshinobu Yamamoto and land a knack pitch. It's pretty impressive to watch. And so, hey, Bobby Miller, we said many different times, him and Michael Grove, we love both of these guys. Yes. I've talked to both of them yep. within the last month and a half, okay, at Oklahoma City. So it's it's hard for me to, to see these decisions being made. But it's exciting that the Dodgers are in transactional win mode right now. No, they have been. They've made tough decisions all year. They have. They've made hard, tough decisions. Who to let go, who to send down, who to, who to you know, release. I mean, this organization is, is top-notch in every level. Like I said, Case, not just winning the, the offseason, not winning the trading deadline. They're winning on a daily basis. I mean, all the way from the top down, the decisions. Those are hard decisions. Good Lord. Like I said, we all love, you know, Miller and, you know, and Michael Grovey. But, you know, that it's time now. I mean, it is what yeah, it is, dude. It, it, we're, we've Produce got an opportunity. Or see ya. Yeah, <laughs> and you got to. That. So this organization has been nails in every, yeah, to absolutely. me in every aspect this year. And I know I'm a Dodger. You call me a Dodger homer if you want. I'm just looking at the process, as you mentioned, the process, the the, the, the transactions they they've made, the tough decisions they made, the way they've had to adjust to injury and all the all the bad things yep. that have happened during the season. Every team goes through it. I'm not saying we're any different, but not every team handles it that well. You know, Absolutely. From, your, from your front office down to your manager and your, your major league staff, even your minor league guys. You know, Henny and those guys are nails, you know, and our minor yeah. league managers. Those guys are, are the best in the business. So it's it's from top to bottom. And like I said, they've just – the things they've done they, is because they've had to do it. And then they haven't shied away from making a tough decisions. They'll probably continue to do that. They have not. Yep. And they have they have been decisions for somebody like me with these young guys. Yep. They've been hard. I mean, it's like, oh, my God. But then you're like, okay, well, <laughs> hey, it is what it is, right? So yep. you just got to put your big boy pants on and go get better. And then we'll see you in, in 2025. And, and hopefully you can reach all of your potential then. But, Coach, hey, man, it's been great to see your face like it always is. And you know I love you. Love you too, Case. Excited about uh, the rest of the Dodgers season. And I said, it it looks like things are coming together. I mean, you know, it just looks like it, they're in a good place right now to Does. me. They're, they're still Does. still searching some on the mound, but it's not like we don't have cats up there who can produce, and we know we, we've got the cats there. It's just, it's just going to be great to see how the pieces all come together with the pitching staff and the, and the lineups the Dodgers put together. I got all the faith in the world in Dave Roberts and the staff and everybody involved there, and I got all the faith in the world in our players. I love them Dodgers. Love me some Casey Porter and Terry and Beverly Porter and all the Porters. So I love you guys. It's a great day to be a Dodger. Welcome to O-State Daily down on the farm. So glad you decided to tune in on the Dodgers minor league action. Triple Oklahoma City, the only team left, did have a good night last night. They put a top pop nod on Salt Lake's head, who is putting their, I believe they built their stadium in 95. This is the last weekend for that stadium. But, hey, James Altman hit a home run. Drew Avens is the all-time hits leader in the Bricktown era for Oklahoma City. John Duplantier threw six scoreless innings. But what we're going to do today, a little bit different, we're not going to cover the action as far as video and analyzing it. We're going to talk to one of the AA announcers, Bruce Howard. Bruce came to Tulsa in the late 80s to be the voice of the Drillers. His first player that he actually got to announce was Sammy Sosa with, with the Drillers in Tulsa. So he's going to kind of take you through. He's going to talk about this year's team, no doubt. But he's going to take you through kind of a little bit of the history of the AA system for the Dodgers and how it became just such a great organization and the value that it brought to the Dodgers and, and kind of give you a reason why the Dodgers saw Double A Tulsa and like, wow, this is a really good place. You know, they set the, uh, the the record for attendance in Texas League and that kind of thing. And Bruce is going to take you through all that. So with, with no more further ado, let's get to it and let's talk to one of the Double A Tulsa announcers, uh, broadcast play-by-play -play announcers, Bruce Howard. Welcome to O-State Daily. Casey Porter here. So glad that you decided to tune in. Fans, today we have a very, very, very special guest. 
play-by-play voice of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, and then also with the Tulsa Drillers. I know he joined for some of the home games with them this summer. Bruce Howard joins O-State Daily. Bruce, I've been listening to you for so many years. I'm a little bit nervous and very much so honored. So thank you so much for joining in. Well, Casey, thank you. It's a pleasure to join you. And, uh, hey, looking forward to to what's going to happen on Saturday. Tell us how you got hooked up with Tulsa, your your history in broadcasting, how you became the play-by-play voice and all that. Well, you know, just just growing up in the radio business, moved around a lot of different places, did everything from uh, DJing to, to news to public relations to sweeping the floor and then of course all of that was all with the opportunity to do a little bit of play-by-play and you know yeah. grew, grew up doing high school you know grew up at the top of a of a you know a, 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 a rickety old pair of stands oh yeah you know in a, in a in a place in a snowstorm and um you know trying to do a game under the conditions and you know no yard lines marked and all of that sort of stuff so you know it started started there started doing high school and junior college stuff way back but um ended up moving to uh, knoxville and then nashville tennessee and then ended up actually coming to tulsa 1989 as the voice of the drillers and i was the voice of the drillers for seven years and started with uh, university of tulsa in 1993. So was Tulsa back then, were they the Rangers then, or were that they, they were, I know they were the AAA affiliates of the Cardinals for quite a while, but had they transitioned to the Rangers by then? Yeah, by the time I got there in 89, it was the Texas Rangers, and uh, boy, that was a period of time they had a lot of talent coming through. And the first yeah. road trip I took, first game I ever did for the Drillers was a nine-hour bus ride to Jackson, Mississippi. Wow. And then the first pitch to the first player, since Tulsa was up in the top half of the first inning, was to Sammy Sosa. Uh, he was oh, wow. Guy. He was the first guy that I actually announced was Sammy at the plate. And, you know, Juan Gonzalez was on that team. And, uh, you know, uh, you had Dean Palmer. You had several. You had 12 players yeah. on that first team I broadcast for the uh, for the drillers that actually made it to the major leagues. And yet they didn't they didn't spit at all to the playoffs. You know, they just didn't have good enough pitching. But anyway, those those were those are great days with some great talent. And then I've and then obviously said. got the job with with TU. In fact, there was a couple of years where I did both the Drillers and University of Tulsa, and I was a very busy man with two very yeah. good part time jobs. Yeah, no doubt about that. Been to Driller Stadium many different times. My dad actually umpired a game when when the Texas Rangers they used to do exhibitions every year, mm-hmm. both with Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Buddy Bell and that group came yep. into Tulsa. I actually got to sit in the dugout with them. So that driller, that old driller stadium there, that that thing was dear to my heart. Yeah, no, it was it was um, uh, no question was. A, in fact, when I joined the league or when I joined the Drillers in '89, it was kind of like the best or maybe yeah. the next to the best uh, stadium, you know, in in the league. And then all the other, you know, cities kind of caught up a little bit. And uh, by the time they moved downtown, which is a great facility now oh, at One Oak Field, wow. by the time they moved downtown, it had kind of. I don't want to say degraded, but it it had seen its use, and uh, it was kind of amongst the the, the oldest and ricketyest uh, of the stadiums at that point in 1995. There was a lot of metal, and it was really really loud, and yep. it just made for a great atmosphere. Yep. You came back on this summer with Dennis Higgins. Dennis Higgins is just simply fantastic. He's a legend in the broadcasting uh, arena. So you're, I get to sit there and listen to Double A baseball, which is wonderful to begin with, and I get to listen to Dennis Higgins. And Bruce Howard, and it's like, oh my God, I can't believe this. So, talk about how uh, the, the, how you got back in the booth as far as baseball goes. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with it, and you know, I get to do about thirty home games a year, so I kind of do Thursday, Friday, Saturday games. And with the MILB, uh, which is obviously what you're watching there, MILB Network, it's uh, it's it's kind of a I don't want to say big deal, but it's an important deal, I guess, absolutely, for the to try to you know put their best foot forward. So why not put another voice in the booth? So it's a simulcast between radio and uh, and streaming, if you will. It's on Bally Live, and it's uh, so it's it, it's it's a fun thing. It's great to kind of get back into a rhythm a little bit. I've been doing baseball, uh, you know, since I since I stopped doing the full time. I've been doing you know three or four games a year, subbing in for for Dennis when he had to have a day off or whatever, but never never to this extent the 30, 30 games and so it's been kind of neat to kind of get back into it and and uh, and then we have those innings where we kind of chat back and forth and it kind of has a more of a major league feel if you will with with two guys in the booth so that's been fun and, and as you mentioned Dennis of course is a great guy does a great job uh, for the drillers but uh, I, I'm okay with this I don't go on the road <laughs> no doubt Brandon Hawkins Brian Carroll to make you guys sound as smart as you do in the booth 
You have to have the guys behind the scenes doing all the research, coming up with the great numbers. It's just every time you guys are like, hey, when was the last time Tulsa had 7,000 people on a Thursday? Right. The third Thursday of the month, it's like two minutes later, Brian Carroll or Brandon, one of them have it. So can yep. you talk about those two? Yeah, those guys, they do a great job. You know, a lot of times it's like, when's the last time Tulsa had a no-hitter through eight innings? And boom, yeah. it'll be right there on a <laughs> yeah. text, you know, uh, re- really soon. So, they, yeah, they do a terrific job. Brian has been there. Well, I'll tell you a story. When I actually flew into Tulsa to interview for the job in the spring of 1989, the guy that met me at the airport was Brian Carroll. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, it was funny because he said, "I'll have a I'll have a Tulsa Drillers hat on," and and uh, so I get off the plane and there's nobody with a Tulsa Drillers hat on, but there's a guy with a Tulsa Drillers bumper sticker with it out, and I, you know, and he said, "Yeah, I forgot my hat," you know. <laughs> That's so, awesome. So we had the he had the bumper sticker. So uh, yeah, that was my basically the first guy I met when I came into the city of Tulsa. I had never been to Tulsa ever before, and so he was the first guy I saw. And he's he's a legend there. And you know Mike Malaga and all of the front office yes. did a great job with the Tulsa Drillers organization. So they're first class, and of course they have a first class facility. I can't believe that that place was built in 2010. It still yeah. looks just pristine and fabulous. And you know if you're sitting there broadcasting the game you see the Tulsa skyline I mean it's 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 one of the better parks I think in all of minor league baseball certainly one of the best ones in all of double-a baseball and they built it facing south so that breeze if you have a breeze in the summer actually is blowing into your face which on a summer evening is just absolutely glorious but hey for those of you who are listening I've, I've been trying to to say it as loud as I can to Oklahoma City fans Tulsa got to hold on to the name Drillers Oklahoma City didn't keep 89ers. So what does it mean just the city of Tulsa just to say, hey, regardless of the affiliate, we are going to a Drillers game? Yeah, I think it's important. I I think, you know, it's kind of gone back and forth through the years. For a lot of years, you had, you know, the Knoxville Smokies and, the you yeah. know, you had these kind of, uh, you know, the, these – some of them even crazy nicknames, the lug nuts and the, you know, and I think yeah. that, that that certainly speaks to the locality. This speaks to the city in which you, in which you have your team. And I, I and I think it's kind of cool. And then there was a period of time, uh, you know, where a lot of the minor league cities said, you know what, I, we want to identify with our major league club. Mm-hmm. So it became, you know, the Lansing twins or the Lansing Dodger or whatever. And uh, now it's kind of turned back the other way where everybody wants to have their own. I mean, you think about the sod poodles of Amarillo and, the, yeah. you know, uh, you know, the wind surge up in Wichita. So yeah, there are some, there are some interesting names in minor league baseball. And, uh, you know, I think that makes it cool. I think that makes it fun. One last question for me. I've taken a lot of your time. I know Thursday, as we record this, is a very heavy prep day for you, so you don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm going to ask you one more question about this Drillers team. Scott Hennessy came in 2017. He is the mayor of Drillville. He is simply fantastic. This has not been a great year, wins and losses, for the Tulsa Drillers, though. But, hey, we know that that uh, Coach Hennessy there, he just does a fantastic job. So can you kind of talk about this year's team this season and Scott Hennessy all at once. Well, you know, it's kind of a disappointing season in that I thought at times there was a team that had enough talent to win the first half or the second half or get in the playoffs. And, you know, unfortunately, as as is the case in minor league baseball, guys get guys get caught, you know, called up. And uh, I think by the end of the year, you know, Tulsa largely was, you know, was a class A team in terms of some of the guys that had, that had come up. And, uh, you know, you think about the shortstops, Austin Gothier, was the st- starting shortstop at the beginning of the year. And then, you know, um, uh, gosh, Alex, I'm Freeland. To, Alex Freeland, you know, played very well. Both of those guys are terrific in yeah. Tulsa, and they both get called up just yeah. when they're really doing well. Dalton Rushing was was hitting the ball extremely well at Tulsa, and he gets called up. And, you know, it's just, it just kind of what happens in minor league ball. And by the time, you know, Tulsa – you know, was done. They had a guy named Noah Miller, who's a decent player playing at mm-hmm. shortstop, but not sure if he would, you know, is he ready for double A? Uh, you know, they do They do have a couple or did have a couple of really good young players. Speaking of young, Taylor Young had a great year for Tulsa. Terrific infielder, stole about 45 bases this year. Um, and there's so, so there are some guys that, that did kind of, you know, st- stayed around through the entire year, but it's just the way it is. You know, I'll, I'll take it back two years ago. Tulsa probably had the best starting five pitching and we're talking about not 2024 but 2023 of anybody in all of minor league baseball it was an incredible staff and by the time the first half the first half wasn't even over and they were all gone you know they'd all been moved up so i mean that's kind of the nature of it uh and you hope you have enough depth in your 
you know, in your farm system that you can bring guys up. And you just never know. When they make that jump from Class A to Double A, that is a big jump. That's a big one. And, uh, you know, some of them come up and do well, and some of them come up and don't do so well. So you just really never know what you're going to get in that regard. There was a period of time it looked like, you know, Tulsa got out of the gate really well in the second half season. They were in first place. And, you know, funny thing is, is, you know, they, they go on a 12-game or 12-day road trip, and they come back, and they're in third, you know. Yeah. And it's not like I don't pay attention to them, but it's like they go on the road and whatever, lose 9 of 12, and uh, they, they kind of start falling out of the race. And they just just, just didn't have quite enough talent to, to, to make it in the Texas League this year. Can you talk about Scott Hennessy a little bit, the mayor oh, of Real Bear yeah. yeah. He's just yeah. terrific. I mean, you remember uh, in the middle of whatever season it was, you know, when Carco left – and he came in, and uh, nobody knew. I mean, they knew him obviously as a great, uh, you know, bench coach or first base coach. I forget which, but you know, he's you know a guy that was well liked and all that. And boy, Tulsa just took off. I'd I'd love to figure out his home record in those first, uh, mm-hmm. you know, five and a half years or what. It's just been unbelievably good. Uh, so he's yeah, he's he's the mayor of Drillville, and he's he's fought through cancer. He's mm-hmm. back. Everything looks good. He looks good. Gets a little tired once in a while, but boy, what a terrific guy. Tulsa loves him and he loves Tulsa. I think, I don't know if he actually moved to Tulsa. I think he, I think he might have uh, at least part of the season in Tulsa because he got, a, you know, his, him and his wife have a horse and, you know, all sorts of stuff. He loves this area and I think Tulsa loves him. I'll tell you another thing before we get out of here. I, I think we have to thank the fans of Tulsa, too. Yeah. They, they lead the Texas League in attendance in 2023. Haven't seen the attendance figures for this season. It's not going to be different. I think they're going to lead the Texas League again because they filled up one oak, so the fans are great. Yeah, I mean, if they don't lead it, they're going to be very close to leading the league when it's all said and done. And uh, that's a that's a tribute to Mike Belega and the entire staff. And uh, you know what? It's not it's not necessarily the wins and losses. It's the experience and, and, and fans in Tulsa just love going to driller games. So they've done a terrific job. Bruce Howard, I want to thank you so much for joining O-State Daily here and, and spending some of your time. I took a lot of your time. So, hey, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate this. This has been just such a great honor for me. Well, thank you, Casey. Appreciate it. And uh, go on any time as long as there's not a game going on.